you ever find yourself anxious or tense and scared, even in the comfort of your own home? I'm Hannah Mason, and in today's Spark, we're going to be exploring real versus perceived danger. Recently, a young woman came to me telling me about a whole collection of challenges that she's having. She's been offered uh, a number of positions in different companies that she's really interested in. She's also been offered to date a number of guys that she's interested in. And she has a few places that she's considering living in that sound really exciting. And as she was describing all of these different options, she was telling me how hard it is. It's so hard that I've been offered these jobs and trying to figure out where I'm going to live. It's so hard. And figuring out who I'm going to date or what I'm going to do about that. It's so hard. And I noticed she kept saying that term. It's so hard. It's so hard. And I pointed it out to her and I said, do you notice that you're saying it's so hard? And she said, no, I didn't realize that. So I pointed it out to her. Every time you say it's so hard, I want you to notice what happens to you. And she said, okay. And then we kept talking. And you know what happened a few minutes later? You know what she said? Surprise, surprise. It's so hard. And then she was like, oh my gosh, I see it. I see it right away. And she noticed how as she said it so hard, her shoulders had slumped. Her hand had gone to her forehead. And um, there was kind of like a tension everywhere in her body. And right away, she started being aware of how she was saying it's so hard. And what's interesting is that on the one hand, saying it's so hard put her into a stressful state, but it also did something else. It relieved her of having to take full ownership and responsibility for her choices, because if it's so hard, then she can't really mess up because it's too hard for her. So whatever she picks is going to be wrong anyway. Or if it's so hard, then it's not her fault if things don't go out well, because, well, it was too hard for her anyway. And she suddenly realized that by calling everything hard, she made life feel dangerous, even though these are like the most amazing, exciting, incredible opportunities. There's nothing dangerous going on. She's not just safe. She's engaged. She's got awesome things going on. But she made all of these different situations feel dangerous in her body, bring tension, create an adrenal response. Now, I've mentioned in other videos before that the way our bodies let us know if something's true or false is simply through our physiology. If we're open and calm and present, we're believing something that's true. If we go into an adrenal fight or flight response, we're believing something that's false. And science has proven that for so many decades, we're actually able to measure whether somebody is telling the truth or lying through a lie detector test by measuring their adrenal response. Is their heart rate going up? Is their breathing growing shallow? Or do they have blood going to their extremities and thus they're much more apt to have sweaty palms and dry mouth? Has their focus just gone total tunnel vision? This is what happens when we're in actual danger, like from a bear in the forest. But even here in our normal lives, in the comfort of our own homes, we can create artificial danger that puts our bodies in stress and isn't really particularly good for our health, but definitely not good for our happiness. And as soon as she saw the pattern, she started realizing that she was making her life feel so much more difficult than it actually was. So I want to take you through a process so you can see for yourself, what is it like to go out of believing it's hard into something that will actually support you, your joy, your health, and your happiness? So in my book, Hold That Thought, which you can get directly from me on, on, here in Jerusalem, or you can get a hard copy on Amazon. Also, it's a free digital download on Amazon or on my website at hannamason.com slash books. So in this book, I take people through a step-by-step, -step, really easy-to-access process called Inquiry. There's lots of cartoons in here and dialogues. It's a fun, quick read. You'll totally enjoy it like all of my other readers have. And in this, in this process called Inquiry, you can take yourself through out of a place of constriction and darkness and feeling danger and to a place of light and being excited about your life. What I want to do today is take you through a very simple process of inquiry called the work of Byron Katie and help you get out of the places where you feel things are hard and into a place where that's much lighter. 
So how do we do that? The first thing we do is ask you to just for a minute, even though it's kind of torturous, fully embody this belief. Life is hard or this situation is hard. You can choose whatever works for you and really feel what it's doing to your body. So I noticed for myself, it helps me to close my eyes. You might want to do the same. That when I believe that life is hard, right away, like my shoulders just slump and I sink and um, there's kind of like a dark cloud that builds up over me. I feel a little bit tense and in my stomach, I kind of feel like jittery and nervous. And I feel more scared about life when I believe life is hard or a situation is hard. So the next thing that I do now that I know where I am and that I'm believing this thought for just a moment I ask myself the question, is it true? Now, for me, I pictured a situation that I thought was hard. I'm deciding between the two different office spaces right now because I'm, I'm, God willing, going to be getting a workspace. And I'm deciding between two and I'm thinking, wow, this is such a hard decision. So for me, it feels so true right now. It's hard for me to admit it, but it feels really true. So the next thing I ask myself is, can I absolutely know that it's true, that it's hard? And right away I can say, no, I can't absolutely know that because I've actually made decisions like this in the past and they ended up actually being easy once I got myself and my stress out of the way. The third question I ask is, how do I react when I believe the thought? So I've already gone through that process with you, the cloud, the tension, the slumpy shoulders. One of the ways that I can look at how I react is also how I behave. So the way that I behave when I think things are hard is I notice I'm a lot more lethargic and I feel a lot more shy, I'm much less apt to ask for help, and I'm much less apt to be proactive and go after what's really important and what I want. So for you, you can figure out how do you behave, how do you treat yourself and other people when you believe the thought that the situation or life is hard. And the fourth thing that you do is take a moment to take a deep breath and just let everything clear. And ask yourself, how would I be without the thought that, for me, let's say, making this decision is hard? Wow, I notice for myself, I just open up right away. And I just kind of feel trusting that when it's time for the decision to unfold, it'll just kind of happen. Because I've seen that happen in the past. That the decision just kind of happens on its own. And that my inner wisdom will guide me to the right decision. So the next thing that I can do um, is something called a turnaround. So we have these four questions. True, absolutely true. How am I with the thought? How am I without the thought? And now we do the turnarounds. The turnarounds are when you take a statement and say it's absolute opposite. Now we're not going to get all heady and ivory tower and philosophical about it. Pretend you're in second grade and somebody said, what is the opposite of this is hard? So for me, this is easy. Um, And I realized, wow, this is easy because I actually have two really phenomenal options. So either way, I'm great. That's one reason why it's easy. Now, I want to make sure that I prove this new statement, this turnaround, this new perspective with at least three proofs. Because just like a chair needs at least three legs to stand on, our subconscious needs a lot of evidence to prove ourselves true. You'll notice how much evidence your subconscious created in order to prove that this is hard is true, right? Right. So the first one for me that this is easy is, yeah, both options are really great and I'm fine either way. Another reason why this is easy is because there have been so many decisions I've made in the past that without my even thinking about it, or maybe I was just too busy and I had to quickly make a decision, everything came out okay. Another reason why this is easy is because at the end of the day, if I work in this office or this office, I'm ultimately totally safe and my life is really okay. Another reason this is easy is because it's actually really easy for me to literally do the physical task of picking up the phone and saying yes to this person or yes to this person. And another reason that it's easy is because I have the support of people around me who I love, whose advice I can garner and who can help me make this decision more effectively. So that's one turnaround and one example of a turnaround. Other turnarounds for this statement might be, this is not hard. Even though it sounds like this is easy, you'll find that different kinds of evidence comes up. Or um, my thinking is hard. So that's a that's a different way of doing it where you take the subject and you switch it around. And for me, my thinking is hard. It's like, yeah, my thinking keeps focusing on all this hard stuff when really the situation's just not that stressful. I'm not really in danger. So I don't need to put myself in a dangerous emotional and physiological state. 
So basically, that's a quick review of the work of Byron Katie. Now, I know for myself, being facilitated through the process is really helpful, and facilitating people through their thinking processes is one of the things I do in my coaching practice. So if that's something that you're looking for, I'm available. I happen to have time in my schedule. We can set up a discovery session here on Facebook or at my website at hannamason.com. In the meantime, I wish you a beautiful day. Want to experience more clarity, vibrance, and joy in your life? Book a discovery session with Hannah at hannamason.com slash joy.